All right, first question, what kind of question is it? It's a work question. It's work energy theorem. We don't even have to use force times distance in this one. Okay, it's just asking us to calculate what how much work is done by using the change in what kind of energy? Kinetic. Kinetic. All right. So give them one mark for their givens. The mass was one and a half, the initial speed three, the final speed nine meters per second. Second mark. Work is a change in energy. Okay, and we are looking at a change in kinetic energy here. So if they had something like this showing final kinetic minus initial kinetic, or they had the formulas plugged in, something like that. Okay, that'll be their third mark, all right? Their fourth mark will be for plugging in the numbers correctly. That's one half times 1.5 kilograms times nine squared minus one half times 1.5 kilograms times three meters per second squared, okay? Um, is gonna give us a total amount of work of 54 joules for their fifth and final mark. Okay, questions on number one. Okay, remember that on your test on Thursday, I probably would ask a, a question like this that would include the force times distance part. Like if the, if the force that did this was exerted over 10 meters, what was the force? Or the force exerted was this many Newtons, how far was the distance? Okay, it would probably have one more step, okay, than this one would. All right, this question, however, is exactly like what I'm going to ask on Thursday on the test, okay? We have a roller coaster that's on top of a 35 meter hill. It is traveling at an unknown speed. So in other words, we're looking for what VI is, okay? Later in the ride, it's 12 meters off the ground, moving at 21.8 meters per second. How, is, how fast was it going at the top of the hill? All right, give them a mark for their givens. Maybe they drew a better picture than me or they just wrote down the numbers, whichever, okay? One mark for that. One mark if they recognized it's an EI equals EF kind of a question. Okay, so they have something like that. Okay, law of conservation of energy. Is there a non-zero value for all four of these things? Yes. Okay, there is kinetic energy at the top because they're asking us how fast it was going. We can only assume they wouldn't ask us to calculate zero. Okay, um, EP, there is, an, there is an EP initial, there's an EP final and an EK final. All right, another mark if they plugged in the formulas. Maybe they eliminated mass as well. Okay, which would probably have been a good idea because I don't think I gave it to you. Okay, next mark is for the manipulation. Okay, we have to manipulate for VI. So what we're going to do is subtract GHI over to that side and then divide by one half and square roots. Okay, so one mark uh, if they got to that point there. Then we have to plug in our numbers. So 9.81 times the initial height. Okay, or sorry, times the final height, sorry, um, plus one half times 21.8 squared, which was the final final speed, minus the initial kinetic energy, 9.81 times 35, divided by one half, square rooted. Okay, so we'll mark if the numbers are plugged in there somewhere, and we should get an initial speed of 4.90 meters per second. So make sure they've got units on that answer. All right, that one is also out of, or sorry, that one is out of six marks. So the whole quiz is out of 11. So give them a mark out of 11 at the top. Okay, let them see it. And then, oh, good, just, he did, he did, right? It's good. So real quickly here, guys, question one, we'll do one law of conservation of energy question, and then I'm gonna answer this question here about uh, number 17 here as well. Okay, so this is a velocity versus time graph, right? So in, in for part A, describe the motion in each interval. Okay, well, it's moving at a constant acceleration forwards. Okay, it's, it's changing its velocity. Now it's moving at constant velocity forwards. Okay, and that constant velocity is actually what value? Two meters per second. Okay, and then it's going to accelerate negatively. Okay, for the last uh, second or what, two seconds, I guess it is. Okay, it's gonna accelerate negatively or backwards. It doesn't actually move backwards, but it accelerates backwards, okay? Um, calculate the acceleration of the object in section A. Well, that's a VF minus VI over T question, so it's two over two, so it should be one meter per second there, uh, more meter per second squared, sorry. And then the total distance over the whole trip, okay? Well, it accelerates during this section, so I need to use the, uh, um, the average velocity, which is the height over two, so base times height over two, so um, we got two times two is four over two is two, Okay, and then this section here is two times four, so that's eight, and then this section here is the same as the other one, right? It's two times two, yeah, so it should just be two 
So that's 12. Yeah? Yep. All right. And then another law of conservation of energy question. Okay, so the good news about law of conservation of energy questions is they're essentially all the same. Okay, let's say we've got uh, a box at the top of this ramp and it's going to slide down the ramp. Okay, um, we'll say that it has um, an initial velocity of zero. Okay, and its initial height is going to be three meters. Right, um, we'd want to calculate how fast it's going here when it's one meter off the ground. Mm -hmm. No, no. Well, when we're talking about the change in energy, it's due to an acceleration. But remember, it's sliding down the ramp isn't going as far as when it's going vertically, right? So when it's fallen this far, it's gone a lot further at a lower rate of acceleration. Had I dropped it off the top, it would have only fallen this far and would be going the same speed already. Yeah? All right, so we got EI equals EF, okay, and we don't have any kinetic energy at the beginning, so it's all potential, or, sorry, EP initial, okay, and then at the end, we've got both EP final plus EK final, okay, uh, and we're looking for something that's part of EK final, so I'm going to bring the, in the final potential over, so I'll have EPI minus EPF equals EKF, okay, so MGHI minus MGHF equals one half MVF squared. The M's are gone, okay? Uh, and then I divide both sides by one half, and then I square root, okay? Plug in my numbers and yeah, they're pretty much all the same. All right, guys, I've just, I've had a number of questions here on number 13 with this car that's going through the snow drift, okay? So I just wanna quickly go over that one here so everyone gets an idea of what's going on. Okay, so I've got this car that coasts through a 50 meter long snow drift. Okay, so they gave me a distance there, 50 meters. Okay, uh, the car has a speed of 20 meters per second before it reaches the drift. When it emerges from the drift, it has a speed of eight meters per second. All right, so I know VI is 20 and I know VF is eight. All right, they're wanting me to find the force that's acting on the car from the drift. Okay. Now we said before that if a question asks for force, it's probably what kind of a question? Work energy theorem question. And this is true because what's changing about this car? No, the force is constant. The snowdrift's force is constant. But what about the car is changing? The velocity, and if velocity is changing, what else about the car is changing? What kind of energy has to do with speed? Kinetic. The car's kinetic energy is changing because the snowdrift is doing work on it, okay, or it's doing work on the snowdrift, okay. Um, so we've got then that the work here is a change in the kinetic energy of the car, all right. If I've got two speeds and they're different, energy is changing. Okay, since it's on a level road, there's no change in potential energy here, just kinetic. All right, work is force times distance, and that's going to mean one half MVI, or sorry, MVF squared minus one half MVI squared. Okay, and I'm looking for force, so what do I have to do with distance? Divide it over to the other side, right? All right, so now I've got my formula for force. All I have to do is plug in my numbers. So one half times the mass of the car, which was big, 5,000 kilograms, okay, um, times eight squared minus one half times 5,000 kilograms times 20 squared. Am I going to get a negative number here? Is that okay? The car's losing energy, so it should be negative. Right. The the problem is that on my key the answer is positive just because I forgot to put a negative on it. Okay, it should actually be a negative force. All right, uh, and then our distance here is 50 meters. 
So when I plug all of that in, I should get a force of 16,800 newtons, but we'll double check just to make sure. All right, so 0 0.5 times 5,000 times 8 squared minus 0 0.5 times 5,000 okay, times 20 squared gives me negative 84,000, 840,000, sorry, divided by 50 is negative 16,800 newtons, okay? Guys, we've done a whole bunch of questions just like that one. What's different about that one is that I made the context of the question more convoluted, okay? It kind of, I talked a lot more in that question than I do in a lot of the others, and it confused people, okay? Make sure that as you're reading through a question, you do exactly what I did, which was start writing down the pieces of information and what they might be, okay? They gave me something that was in meters, so I said that was probably a distance. They gave me two different speeds, okay? And from the context of the question, I knew that this one, the 20, was the first, and the eight was the second, right? And then it asked about force, so I made that a question mark. Well, I only really have one formula, okay, or one idea that we've gone over that could include those pieces of information, okay? All right, any other ones we need to go over? Don't be afraid to ask, guys. Okay, I'm going to give you a few more minutes, and then there's a couple that I'm going to pick. Okay. All right, so in this question here with the rock that's being dropped, okay, a couple of things we got to realize about this rock. Right here, when the rock is actually being dropped, all of its mechanical energy is in what form? It's all potential. As the rock falls to these other heights that they list, okay, 15, 10, and 0, all right, I'm asked to calculate the kinetic energy and the potential energy at all of those positions. Everyone okay with that? Okay. At this position, does the rock have some potential and some kinetic? Okay. What does this EM, or sorry, what do this EM and this EM have in common? Up here, EM was all potential, right? But here, some of it is potential and some of it's kinetic. But what hasn't changed about the total mechanical energy? How much of it there is? Mechanical energy doesn't change, okay? This is a law of conservation of energy question. The amount of mechanical energy I have at the top is the same as it is at the bottom, is the same as it is at 15 and 20 and whatever, okay? It's always the same number. What's different is how much of it is potential and how much of it is kinetic, okay? At all of these heights, I can calculate the potential energy by going M times G times H. So for the 15 meter height, that's gonna be two times 9.81 times 15. Okay, and for this one down here, okay, same idea. It'll be 2 times 9.81 times 10. And down here, it'll be how much potential energy does it have here on the ground? Zero. All right. Now, this first position here, I've got to do that calculation. M times G times H initial. So that'll be 2 times 9.81 times 20, which comes out to 392.4 joules. All right, so that's how much potential energy it has at the top. It is also how much mechanical energy it has here, 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 and here. That mechanical energy value will not change as long as it's falling. That's why we can say that EI equals EF, okay? The total mechanical energy never changes throughout the entire fall. So that means that down here, okay, the potential energy equals zero, and what does the kinetic energy equal? The total mechanical energy, right, because all of it now at the bottom will be kinetic. So it's 392.4 joules. Okay, for these ones in the middle, I've got to figure out what mg is and subtract it from em. Okay, and then I'll have the kinetic energy at those points. Okay, again, guys, it's the wording of the question that's getting people, right? I asked you guys to do that the first day we talked about mechanical energy, okay, was to do this, EM equals EP plus EK, and figure out which one was which, 
Okay, it wasn't a difficult calculation, but because of the way I worded the question, it totally threw everybody. Okay, you got to be able to read through that question and know what it's asking for. Am I going to ask one like this on the unit exam? No, it's way too much work to test a simple concept. Okay, you're going to get one like we've done already, roller coaster or sled or something like that. Okay, an EI equals EF question, but this is the same principle. Okay, the mechanical energy is the same at all of these points down the fall. Okay, does everyone follow on that? Okay, okay. for this uh, sledding question, okay, so we got a person riding a sled down a hill that's 4.6 meters tall, so it's not a very high hill, okay? They start at the top with a speed of 3 meters per second, or sorry, 3.1. So that'll be VI, okay? Our initial height is 4.6 meters. They're wanting to know what will their speed be at the bottom of the hill? What's my final height? Okay. Is the mechanical energy at the top of the hill the same as it is at the bottom? Yes, it is. All right, so at the top, I'll have some potential energy and some kinetic energy. And at the bottom, I'll only have what? I only have kinetic, because if H is zero, the potential energy is zero. All right, now I can put in my formulas. M times G times HI plus one half MVI squared equals one half MVF squared. I'm trying to find VF, okay? The M's will cancel off. I can get rid of those right now. And then I'm gonna divide both sides by one half and then I'm going to square root. Okay, so that'll be 9.81 times 4.6 plus 0.5 times 3.1 squared divided by one half. Okay, when I plug that in, okay, I should get 10 meters per second at the bottom. All right, are these all kind of formulaic? Like, do they all kind of follow the same pattern? Okay, once we get the pattern down, guys, it's just a matter of recognizing which pattern to use. Any ones I haven't gone over that you would like to go over? Okay, keep working on it then.